Hi, welcome to the very first episode of The Michelle Show. Uh, Ed is joining me today. Hi, I'm Ed Gell. Nice, nice to see you. And thank you also very much for joining me today on this first installment of my show. That's great. And uh, we're really excited to have you here today uh, in, um, in studio. And, uh, and basically, I wanted to just reiterate what everyone, a lot of people in the chat room already know of what this show is all about and what your plan is and Correct. how it's going to work. I, my, the basis of my show really is to bring out into the open, an open forum conversation about topics, personal topics, women's topics, just life topics that people don't really like to talk about. So um, a lot of women's taboo subjects. A lot of women's taboo subjects, but as time goes on, we expect for the topics to expand into anything just related to life issues. Right. Um, today's topic, which is online dating scams, is a really important topic, I feel. And uh, especially uh, the romance scam that has nothing to do with money. Because as some of you know and have seen online, there have been many, many instances where uh, women and men alike will meet somebody online and begin a romance and over time they realize that they're being scammed for money well this mm -hmm. is not what today's topic is about today's topic is about what happens when you find out months down the road that the person you think you've been talking to doesn't even exist right well uh so it's not just about financial scams but just emotional emotional scams yeah. and i think it's a lot easier to fall prey to this kind of this kind of online dating scam because who would think that somebody's out there you know uh, trying to rape somebody emotionally right. and not take something of value from them which is usually what, what you expect the signs that you usually expect to see is a question of money or when somebody asks you for something mm -hmm. after you've started a relationship online. Mm -hmm. But in this particular instance, this uh, today's topic is what about when you meet somebody online, they send you pictures, they romance you, they make you fall in love with them only to find out later that the person that you thought it was didn't even exist. Right. And I think probably the the one number reason why I think that people do that is because it's so easy to hide behind a keyboard and to like pretend like you're somebody else and even in your dreams you might dream of being you know the person right yeah that's right right and you have this like super ego that you want to like make alive all of a sudden in the online world right right you know a lot of people are living a life that they that they uh, probably w uh, find to be ordinary, ordinary or mediocre, and really, um, you know, the, the the online dating situation lends itself lends itself to uh, being able to create this fantasy character. You know, whoever right. it is that you wish you were, right? So to speak. So there are people that are you know stealing other people's photos, uh, creating this you know this persona yeah. that eventually Alter ego right that eventually you find out doesn't exist right you know everybody that's watching now a lot of people that are watching now probably think that this couldn't happen to them but it happened to me mm -hmm. <laughs> so so you have first-hand experience i have first-hand experience and i can tell you that i'm the the person who is least likely you know for this to have happened to so well, that's that's probably what everyone thinks. That's probably what everyone thinks. <laughs> right. That's why I think that's why they get that's, you know, yes. suckered into it. That's why they get suckered into it. So right. um, I wanted to bring this out into the open today. It's not a topic that a lot of people talk about. People think of online scams as, you know, the, the money scams that, that you hear coming out of Africa. Right. And, you know, and all chain over the letters. world. Right. Chain letters and things like that. This is a completely different topic. Right. And, and I can tell you, if I can fall prey to this, anybody can fall prey to this. Mm -hmm. um, joining us today is Emily, who is an online dating expert. Uh, Emily's been dating online for a number of years, has a lot to say on the topic, is very knowledgeable. Um, and she's joining us on Skype, by the way. <laughs> Hi, all. How are you guys? Say hello. Hi, Hi. Emily. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Where, where are you at, Emily, if you can disclose where you're at? Yeah, yeah. I'm located in Los Angeles, California. Oh, great. Welcome to the show. 
Thanks. Beautiful place to live, hard place to date. Oh, wow. I can just imagine all the stories. Yeah. <laughs> so what makes you uh, uh, a sort of expert at this, I, I guess is the first question. You know, I've been dating for a long time, and um, I'm in my early 30s. I've experienced, I think, kind of every online dating kind of interface there is out there. And I definitely think that my experiences are similar to those of kind of every male and female in the U.S. I just am willing to talk about it. So I've got a lot of tips of the trade. Um, and I've definitely kind of been there where I've been on the other end of a scam. And, and it sucks when people try to take advantage of you emotionally. Mm -hmm. And is there like a certain criteria that these scammers are looking for or like... You know, you know, there was actually, I just actually blogged about it. There was a special on 2020 on online scams. And of course, as Michelle had mentioned, there was one about, you know, people trying to get money and for people to send money to Ghana and kind of all of that stuff, which hopefully some of us are, are, are keen to pick up on now these days. But mm -hmm. the other one was a woman who had met a married man on online, on an online dating service. And, and I think that it, something that we have to consider is it's something that could happen to you in a bar. It could happen to you at a grocery store. It could happen to you anywhere where you can meet a married person. Mm -hmm. So it just comes down to being smart. And, you know, if somebody doesn't want to meet you immediately, you got to put, put on your spidey sense and wonder why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I want to put out there right now, you know, the, the gist of what happened to me without, because I can talk about this subject for, I can talk about this subject forever. So I, uh, I'm only going to give you, you know, uh, a few details uh, so that you understand uh, what some of the signs were in my particular case. But uh, basically, I met somebody on Facebook, and I normally don't accept friend requests from people I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I, somebody reached out to me on Facebook and wrote me a very well-articulated first message, mm -hmm. which, uh, you it's know, very I, sexy. <laughs> um, it is it is very sexy and I'm a sucker yeah. for I'm a sucker for people that write well and this person articulated you know they, they were very eloquent in their message and basically uh, it was love at first sentence <laughs> if that makes any sense <laughs> right he didn't even have a picture up you know mm -hmm. in the in the in the first uh, in the first email that I received but basically from that moment on it became a, a corresponding you know, daily, multiple times a day. Um, he said he was a surgeon, so his time was very limited. He couldn't be on the phone constantly. He couldn't, uh, it, uh, mind you, he lived out of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't expecting to meet the guy in person, you know, in uh, a, a day or two days. It wasn't a situation where we could mm -hmm. set up a meeting soon. Mm -hmm. And he just, you know, maybe I said, maybe I got personal in the emails and, and he fed off of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe he knew what to say, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that over the course of the many months that we were corresponding, and he was very present, very consistent. Mm -hmm. He was there all the time. And for those of you that have ever had an emotional void, um, I can certainly say that this online person was more available and more present mm -hmm. in my daily life than what many, many people Many other people have not been, mm -hmm. you know, so by just corresponding, by though. just corresponding, okay. you know, we would chat live, mm -hmm. but never with never with a video camera. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't think anything of it because initially we were going to meet four or five weeks into, you know, the online correspondence. So right. there wasn't really a reason for me to think that he was lying. Right. And, you know, we shared personal stories. It became an, you know, an intimate online dating situation. And uh, it took many, many months. I was probably 10 months in before I found out, listen to this, Emily, before I found out that the pictures he was using, because he had volumes of pictures on his, on his page, it took months before a friend alerted me that she recognized the photos as being a famous movie star from Brazil. <laughs> oh my no, God. No wonder you fell for him. <laughs> I would have fallen for that too. You mm -hmm. I mean, can, can you imagine? It caught took, if he used correct grammar. Uh, well, listen, there, there, are, there are layers to this story. You know, the, one is not only the dangers of online dating, but 
but things to look out for in the, the social networks because um, I love Facebook. I use it every day all the time, but this person created not only a false identity on a, a false Facebook account, but he also created multiple fake identities, which he had as his friends on his Facebook account. So over the course of the many months that we were corresponding, he would manipulate those characters into writing things on his wall to substantiate the lies that he told me throughout our online relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a very that's complicated... That's pretty elaborate. <laughs> that's pretty elaborate. That's a very complex, you know, scenario. And I, I certainly didn't see this coming. Mm -hmm. You know, when he said he was a doctor and his friend on his page was posting on his wall, Dr. So-and-so, when are you going to send me, you know, the, the information we discussed about spinal neurosurgery... That substantiates that he's a doctor. Yeah, or at least most in your mind, right? At least in your mind. <laughs> right. So we're talking about a person that, you know, went through the trouble of not only creating a fake identity, but multiple identities on Facebook to help substantiate his story. Right. Which then leads to another, you know, another aspect of what we're talking about here. If somebody's capable of doing that, what kind of danger, life threatening danger, are you putting yourself in because this guy had to be a sociopath, a psychopath, something. Yeah, even if, yeah, if you decide right? to meet with him. If I would have ever, if, if we would have right. ever made a real effort to meet, what would, what would have come of it? I mean, I don't, I don't know to this day if my life was put in danger because I never found out who the person was. How do you like that? Yeah. What do you think about that, Emily? <laughs> Is this, does that uh, sound familiar to you? Yeah, you know, I, I'm lucky enough where I haven't really had the kind of emotional scam that that's happened yet. I am a very blunt person, which is a fortunate thing and an unfortunate thing. But <laughs> I, um, I really have come to grips with the fact that whenever I am online dating, I want to meet somebody almost immediately. I mean, after two to three dates, I get to, or uh, two to three emails, I say, hey, are we going to meet or are we not? Because I found a lot of the time that when I kind of converse with somebody a ton on email, I realized that maybe I just have kind of, you know, written chemistry with somebody and not that chemistry that you really need in person. Right. So one of the things that I tell everybody when they're online dating is to kind of cut the crap and, you know, meet somebody ahead of time and always be smart about it. When you meet somebody, you know, drive your own car and meet somebody the very, for the very first time, you know, in a very public space. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's, you know, a restaurant or, or coffee or, you know, I don't think that dating online has to be as scary as it is because there are a lot of, of great um, outcomes that have come from it. And especially with the way that our lives are so stressed out today, um, we need kind of an outlet to meet other people that you're not going to meet, you know, just during your everyday life. Right. And, and I, I agree that, you know, the Internet and corresponding on the Internet gives you a means by which to screen the candidates, have an early conversation, even if it's written, you know, to gauge if you have things in common. I, I, that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, aside from, because th this person I didn't meet thinking I was going to date him at some point. It turned into that after we corresponded. But I have, you know, been on other, uh, on other websites, you know, that, are, that cater to, you know, singles meeting and whatnot. And I think they're great because it allows you to figure out sooner as opposed to later if you have anything in common. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But unfortunately, you know, the whole thing lends itself to people creating fantasies, you know, and somebody falling victim mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, someone who lies about their identity. Right. Well, and what's the scariest thing, too, is while we're all so stressed out in our, our everyday life, you don't, you're, you're so protective of you know, your money and your independence and your house and kind of all of the things that are important to you, for, you know, money-wise. But you forget that you need to protect your emotional kind of being of you as well. And yes. that's what a lot of the people can take advantage of. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's take a moment to thank our, our sponsors. Yeah, I wanted to mention our sponsors. We'll start with usgoldcoins.com. And uh, they're, the best way to reach them really is 1-800-HOT coin and uh, they do have a website which is usgoldcoins.com 
But uh, they are our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins. Um, and they, they take a hands-on approach, so it's better to call them and speak directly for the most current inventory and if you have any questions. Uh, the other is uh, Mezzi Grill, which is our Mediterranean food here in New York City. They, um, they now are serving breakfast and they're located just south of Columbus Circle on 8th Avenue at 55th Street in New York City. And uh, CarpeVM.com, they are a video marketing uh, website and uh, you can call them also or email them and speak with Charlie and uh, he and his crew works very closely with you from beginning to end to ensure that your video makes an impact on the web and it engages your viewers. So if you have a, a business or something that you're trying to promote, they actually put it in video form and, uh, and hopefully that you can market your products. Um, the other uh, website is uh, mountgox.com is our sponsor and uh, they are the Bitcoin exchange site and they um, uh, basically you can go and buy bitcoins with dollars or euros and now they accept uh, Australian dollars and uh, Cana I think coming soon Canadian dollars but they also take British sterling and, um, and they have a special going on right now where you can uh, uh, trade for 0.3% uh, now through uh, August 9th and we just wanted to thank our sponsors so much for allowing Michelle and us to be here. And, uh, and if you can just, you know, pr patronize them or even just call or email and tell them how much you love the shows here on Only One TV, that would be great. Emily, we have an online chatter that has a really good question for you. It's a flan handler. He wants to know where is a good place to meet when you're dating online? Tell us uh, some of your better experiences. Where have they, where have they come out of? Yeah, some of my better experiences. I would definitely recommend um, to not do dinner when you're first dating somebody. Um, I've had a lot of guys tell me that you know they've invested so much money in their online dating life because they have taken all of these you know first dates to really nice dinners and then they've realized into the first drink that they don't like them. Right. So, um, you know, with all of us being in a recession right now, dating doesn't have to be expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, meeting at the local pub and grabbing a happy hour, beer is always fun. I mean, if you don't drink, I think getting Starbucks. Pinkberry was actually one of my very favorite first dates. Mm -hmm. um, you learn a lot about somebody with, you know, what kind of frozen yogurt they get and what their <laughs> toppings are. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's a lot of really fun first dates that you can do that are cheap and you know you sit down for an hour, 90 minutes and you really get to know if that's somebody you want to spend any more time with or if you just kind of want to part ways or introduce them to one of your friends. Now are you, are, are you mostly uh, meeting your, uh, your dating candidates on like Match.com, on eHarmony, uh, where are you meeting the best yeah, assortment I mean, of candidates, so to speak. I've met, I mean, I've met dates everywhere. I've met everyone from, you know, somebody at the gym to somebody online to, you know, a pizza place to the grocery store to OkCupid. Okay I mean, I literally try to, to meet anybody wherever I can. The most important part about it is that when you are dating somebody and, and when you're ready to meet somebody online, mm -hmm. that you don't have a great you know profile of what you expect out of that person um, with online dating I think you really need to think out of the box mm -hmm. and see what else is out there that's not in your top 10 list mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, not dinner is that you're saying that mainly because that's that that's what the men are saying that it's just you know, expensive I've heard a lot about that 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 and it's funny because I've been invited to dinner where I've had to pay for half the meal and that's happened several times That's where a guy has invited me out from an online dating relationship or from a just you know from meeting online and they have you know wanted to go dutch at dinner which i think is completely inappropriate but that's another <laughs> show topic we're gonna you're you're right that is an upcoming show topic yeah. going going dutch <laughs> yeah what the hell is that all about <laughs> the men always should always be paying yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> well, so, you know, I think that there's, I, I just heard from a lot of people, and I think that dinner can be a really big commitment for a first date. So it's yeah, it always is. great to uh, to do something a little simpler. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, I agree. I think that uh, people are obviously are more conscious about how, what they're spending. And, and if I'm single and I'm dating two or three times a week, I mean, we're talking about easily in New York City, $100 at the very least for one date so you're talking yeah. about hundreds of dollars to keep me on the verge of almost finding that perfect person yeah but, and i can see that the chat board is um is blowing up with questions yes yeah yes. they have a yeah uh, cassandra has a good one um i think well I, I can probably read it here i have a friend who has been dating a guy for almost a year but they've never met i've tried telling her to end it but she doesn't listen it cost me our friendship in his previous relationship with her friend. He pretended to be someone else and dated her best friend. If that doesn't show my friend what a psychopath he is, what will? Any advice? Yeah, I mean, if you have a friend who is failing to see the signs, you know, if they confide in you and they, they tell you, like I told, see, my problem was that I told a lot of, uh, a handful of my friends what I was going through. I, I even let them read some of the messages and most of my friends thought the guy existed just based on the correspondence. Mm -hmm. But when you tell a friend and the friend sees that there's something suspicious, I mean, Emily, what do you tell that person to try to shed light, you know, on, on the whole thing and get them to, to see that something is very, very wrong when they're just refusing to meet in person? You know, as a friend, there's only so much you can do. Um, we're all adults and you need to act like one. Mm -hmm. And if for some reason your friend isn't listening to you, then I think, you know, it, they're, they've kind of got their situation in their own hands. There's not much that they can do. Mm -hmm. um, and there's not much you can do. You voiced your opinion and really that's kind of, I mean, that's, you, you did your job as a friend. Right. Now, in, in, the, cor in the, the correspondence of it, I mean, what are... Uh, you, you mentioned, for example, you give, uh, you give the uh, candidates that you're meeting and whatnot a, a, a three email, you know. Uh, pretty, pretty much, yep. <laughs> pretty much, right. There's three emails before you request to meet in person or, or you just, you know, you shut them out. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the signs, you think? Um, and I'll share some of mine as well, but um, what are some of the signs? I mean, when they don't want to talk to you on the phone, there's a problem. That's that. I mean, hello. That's your number one. Right. Sign. They and don't if, want to talk to you on the phone. And if they um, don't, and if they don't want to, you know, talk live with a with a video cam, obviously that's another sign. Yeah, and, and you know, I have to say, those are two things that I actually prefer not to do as an online dater. Um, when I meet some, when I am, you know, talking with somebody via email um, on an online dating site, I don't really like to give out my phone number, and I don't really, you know, like to talk um, on video chat. I just give them the opportunity to meet me in person, or it's kind of it's kind of it. Mm -hmm. um, that's just my personal opinion, but I think phone is a is a great thing that you definitely need to do. The only thing with the phone, and this is where it gets a little complicated, is when you are dating because people have moved around so much. You can have an area code that's you know all the way across the country, and they can be telling you that they're in your city. Right. Right. So there's a lot of ways to um, to see the scams coming, though, I think, um, especially, uh, unfortunately for you, it sounds like a lot of the, the clear signs were hidden. I mean, I think when an email is written in all caps, it's it, it tends to not be human. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. totally true. Right. It's, it's computer automated and they're, you know, they're reaching out to you for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is when, um, you know, the grammar is horrible. You can yes. normally tell that that's coming from somewhere else as well. Yes. I mean, listen, I don't even, I don't date real life guys that have horrible grammar. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. That's a big thing. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. My, my tips for a good profile. Yeah. Now, Jennifer online in the chat room is asking if, in my particular case, if the guy ever wanted to meet and, and did he use excuses? Did he ever? Um, I said earlier that he said he was a doctor um, and that he had a very busy schedule. And, you know, at, at first we set a date to meet, which was about five weeks in. I was going to, he was supposedly from Florida. Um, those of you that know me know that I'm from Florida, so I visit Florida all the time. So we scheduled a tentative date to meet five or six weeks into the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, and I call it a relationship because it very much became that. I mean, it totally consumed me. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, w when the, the five weeks were up, suddenly his father passed away and he had to leave the country <laughs> because he was originally from Spain, supposedly. Mm -hmm. So five weeks in, he had to leave the country. <laughs> so when it was time for me to go to Florida, uh, the meeting couldn't happen. And then the relationship turned into, you know, for a couple of weeks, my trying to console him through his father's death. Right. So I wasn't trying to put pressure on him, you know, mm -hmm. to, to when meet, are you coming right. back? Right. I just wanted to be a source of, you know, of comfort. Right. So we spent another two to three months like that. Oh, wow. Then when it was time to meet again in Florida, three months later, you know, um, a surgery came up that you know that where he couldn't make it and basically i held on another seven or eight weeks or so and then that was when i found out that he wasn't the person that he said he was right but you know but how did you find that out i found out i said earlier that a friend alerted me but basically what happened was i i kept showing a friend of mine uh pictures oh that's you know right. i showed yeah. a friend of mine pictures of, mm -hmm. of the guy and she kept saying you know he reminds me of somebody i know <laughs> He reminds me of somebody I know. Well, weeks later, she calls me up one early one morning and she said, uh, in, in a voicemail, she said, I remember who he looks like. Mm -hmm. He looks like so-and-so, the actor from this soap opera that had aired like eight years ago. It was a Brazilian soap opera dubbed in Spanish. And I Googled it, found the guy. Now imagine me Googling the soap opera, seeing video footage, of the person I've been talking to for months mm -hmm. and then Googling the real actor's name and finding virtually all the pictures that the guy had on his Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, so you knew right then and you, there. Did you confront him, Michelle? I did. I confronted him and then this is where it gets a little, you know, it gets sticky because I, I, I had to confront him right away. I couldn't, I, I couldn't not confront him and just, you know, shut him out. I was invested way too much emotionally mm -hmm. and um, I called him on it you know I emailed him right away sent him you know the video footage the pictures I told him that I knew what he was doing and at that point I was still so emotionally involved Emily that I was willing to still meet him because I thought that maybe he just had a complex about the way he looked physically and maybe he was the person that he said he was just didn't look the way he said he did mm -hmm. or that he portrayed in his pictures mm -hmm. and i didn't have a problem with that so you assumed that everything else was may have been real i assumed except that everything, the pictures right except the pictures so i confronted him he gave me a story about why he didn't tell me the truth and then he promised to send me a real picture took it took two weeks for him to do that and when he did do that i could tell right away it was yet another hot guy from the movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So I, I hung on via email for several weeks because you can imagine that, you know, I really wanted to know who it was. I mean, I, I don't know to this day who it is or who it was. And, you know, I, it, the curiosity is always going to be there. You were really involved. You were connected. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. So it took, you know, I, I, I remained... Uh, connected via email for several weeks just trying to get him to admit to, to me who he was I mean I got his IP address I think I have a really good idea of where he lives and who he is but I'm not a hundred percent sure and at this point am I really looking to spend an enormous amount of money to have the guy tracked down just to find out who he is to get some sort of vindication right. I, I just I don't it's, it's been an energy draining project as it is right. I don't, I don't need to take it any further, yeah. but if anything can come of this really is for people to know that this can really happen to everybody. And, you know, uh, it, it, it's very easy uh, to fall prey because people can spend, you know, listen, even if you have a full-time job, you can, nowadays you can connect on your phone, you can connect on your laptop and you can feed into somebody's emotional void 20 times a day and make them feel like a million bucks and hook them that way right that that's really you know what it comes down to so um i mean what do you think emily <laughs> well you know it's funny because a lot of the people in the in the chat room have this question and i'm kind of curious too are you were, did you ever think maybe it was somebody that knew you 
I thought that maybe it was somebody who knew uh, who who knows me um, only because I mean how did they find me you know what I mean how because yeah. this, this was a person who sent me initially a random email um, so you know there are millions of people on Facebook so the question is how did he find me did he just get a friend suggestion and pick me at random because he liked my picture I don't know um, to this day I, I don't think it's somebody that I know only because all of the dialogue, just so you know, was in Spanish. None of the dialogue was in English. I actually, at some point, want to want to publish the dialogue online, even if you know. I don't know if I'll ever translate it into English, but I do want to publish it online um, so that people can read it and and see how easy it is. First of all, it's a very interesting story. The dialogue is fantastic. Even today, when I read it, <laughs> it's, juicy. I get it's, yeah. it's just so juicy. <laughs> but you know, I want people to be able to read it and maybe uh, they're going through the same thing and they can relate, you know, what they're reading to something mm -hmm. that's going on in going on in their life. Right. But I mean, it's just a, it's a it's a it, it's a long and drawn out story. It took me 10 months to figure out that this guy wasn't who he said he was. And I can still to this day admit that even though, you know, he lied and he has, you know, psychopathic tendencies. He was very present. He mm -hmm. was very present in my life. I, I mm -hmm. shared a lot of intimate information with him. He counseled me through bad moments. I mean, this is a person who was very, very, uh, very smart. Uh, to finish answering your question, Emily, you asked if I thought it was somebody that I knew. Um, since the dialogue was in Spanish, and he said he was from Spain, and there's, you know, there are certain words, and, and it's not a, Span, uh, Spanish from Spain is not a different dialect so to speak but every Spanish country has different vocabulary words and things that they use that makes that makes it you know that distinguishes what part of the world they're from I don't know anybody I don't really have any friends that are that are from Spain let's say you know mm -hmm. except for one really good friend that I know it wasn't him mm -hmm. um, and he spoke to me very consistently in this verbiage that was typical of somebody from that part of the world right so Maybe he's a friend of a friend that yeah. saw me on somebody's page. I don't know. I mean, now is, he, is he still on Facebook or did he just disappear? He disappeared because I, I sent an email to Facebook letting them know what happened to me. I think they followed up because um, actually the last time I did a search, his profile was still up. But I think that, you know, that's only because... You can never really make a profile disappear mm -hmm. unless you, you uh, un unactivate an account. Mm -hmm. So I don't know exactly uh, if anybody else is able to like friend this guy mm -hmm. because I, since I blocked him from my particular page, every time I try to go into his page, even from, from my IP address on my computer, I can't access it mm -hmm. because I blocked him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and, and that's another thing. Facebook when you submit a complaint to them of this sort, I mean, something may have been updated since this happened to me a couple of years ago. Um, but Facebook, when, when you send in a complaint, basically what they'll do is they tell you that they're going to look into it, but they're not going to give you any further information. So how do you know if it's ever taken care of, if it's ever addressed? No, you don't. It's just. I mean, I mean you don't. To me, it's like, uh, as soon as I find out someone's lying to me, it's like I just, you know, pretend like they never existed. I mean, I, I try not to do business with people that are, that you find out that are liars or, you know, scammers or cheaters. And if you see them or saying something to someone else that could be deceitful or is a lie, then that's good enough reason for me not to deal with them because it's just, why bother? You know, there's just way too much in, you know, that they're trying to do to try and figure out right what they're up to you know it's like it's not worth it so um i wanted to to ask you emily um i forget who asked the question but i copied and pasted it onto my clipboard are there tips or red flags to look out for that should indicate you are being scammed aside from no video camera um i mean you know there's obviously there's a few a lot of people right now are using kind of the army um, you know, army veterans as a scam, you know, saying that they are coming and going from, um, from war and that they need money and supplies sent once they're there. So that's always something to kind of be careful for. Um, 
Another thing is a, a lot of the time people will say that they're, and I don't know why it, it, they always use someone foreign, but a lot of the time it's somebody that's saying they're from Australia or it, it's always an English speaking foreign country. Um, and that's when they say that they're, you know, going abroad for work and they would love to have you come visit, but they don't have the money to fly you there. And a lot of the time you need to be careful, obviously, with, with the money things. Uh, don't send your money anywhere. Spend it on yourself. Yes. That's, that's my tip. <laughs> um, but the other thing, you know, when it comes to the emotional scamming is, again, you just need to be really careful about how many emails are going back and forth. And just to be really weary... Um, that you're asking a lot of questions, that you're not just the one answering them. Mm -hmm. and, and is there some, is there certain things that you want to address right up front? Like, um, is there certain questions that you have, that you always ask within the first few times? Yeah, you know, it's hard because I think a lot of the time you want to save, you know, your, your almost your interview questions, like your first date questions for your first date. Right. So I always find that a lot of the time the emails that I get that aren't from scammers, you know, that are from people that I've met with, you know, that I've, that I've met on first dates are really, you know, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, how long have you lived in Los Angeles? What do you do for a living? Just kind of the very, the very general stuff that gives you an idea of what type of person that is. Um, you know, you always want to be curious as to if somebody can take you to lunch on a Wednesday, what kind of job do they have where they can take you to lunch on a Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, if, if they're not available until 9.30 at night, it, it was funny, I, I went out with somebody a couple weeks ago and the only time he could go out during the week was like after nine. <laughs> and I kept saying like, in, in, in LA, that in New York, that would be something that was totally normal, but in LA, you're kind of like, let's do happy hour. I mean, that's, that's a school night, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it seems like you almost have to question everything. You kind, you know what though, you kind of do, because you always, the most important person to take care of is yourself. Yes. And um, you really, you know, both with men and women, you really need to turn on your kind of intuition and see if something feels right or wrong. I can guarantee that 90% of the time, if something is wrong, you're going to be able to feel it. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I have a personal, sort of a personal experience. I'm not in the dating world right now or have been in a long time. But I do meet people all the time online, Skype, or whatever. And uh, Bruce and I actually met this, uh, it was a guy actually on Skype. And he was from Sweden or something. And we had this communication for months. And there was never any kind of thought that he was trying to get something from us. It was just mere conversation, sometimes, you know, uh, asking for advice, this and that. And after a few months of knowing him, the natural questions that I asked was, "Do you are you dating someone? Are you married? Da da da. Uh, what kind of women do you like?" Uh, and then I'm now playing matchmaker, and so this is where I went wrong was that I matched him up to one of my good friends that lives in Miami, and uh, to make a long story short, you know she was very happy to have met him online and uh and then they talked countless hours on the phone uh i had never actually seen him on skype because he claimed that he didn't have a video cam so we just talked on voice <coughs> excuse me so i we assumed that he was legitimate because there was no other indication and so finally my friend talked to him for hours hours and months and they finally agreed to meet in New York City. So my friend flew up to New York to meet him. And guess what? He never showed up. Never to be heard of again. Oh, that's horrible. That's, that's horrible. crazy. I know. And that's I crazy. felt horrible just because I felt... You were in the middle. Culpable, you know. You were, you were in the middle. Yeah. I, I want to bring up a, an interesting comment that James said in the live chat. James said, and, and I'll, I'll rephrase just to not use you know, ver verbatim <laughs> uh, what he said, but he said that rather than getting, uh, let's say, love in person, that I allowed myself to fall into a photo drama, you know, online. Right. Um, I certainly am able to get love in person, but this is a very, I'm actually glad he brought it up because this is a very interesting point in this entire topic, that a lot of times the emotional void is greater than your physical need to have sex. 
Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Okay, because I, 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 during the time that I was corresponding with, with this guy, I actually had, was kind of in a relationship with somebody else. And when I, and I'm even embarrassed to admit this, but I broke off the relationship that I was in because I was so emotionally invested in this new person. Right. I wasn't even interested in the guy that was giving it, to, giving it to me for real anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm glad that James brought it up because that really is an important, an important part of this entire topic that, that, you know, the person that fulfills you emotionally, that goes so much farther than just, you know, the 20 minutes of the real thing that you get somewhere else. Mm -hmm. it, it really has nothing to do with sex. Most people that will fall prey to this are people that have an emotional void. Hey, I'm not afraid to admit it. I, I did at the time. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, these people that are online doing this, they're looking for they're that. Looking for that. Yeah. They're looking for that. And they yeah. actually get an ego boost knowing not only that they have control over you, but that they're so important to you. Mm -hmm. You know, that you've be that they've become such an important part of your life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 I got myself into the whole photo online email drama, you know, versus the real thing. And, and I got to tell you, it w while it lasted, it was very fulfilling. Yeah. <laughs> now, Michelle, can we talk about another one of the blogs or one of the kind of scams that's happening right now? That's yes. Regarding um, married men online. Okay, go yes. ahead. I, I'm just curious because um, we have somebody kind of in the chat room, um, Flan Handler, who who is on the online dating sites, and he's he's thinking about getting divorced, but is dating um, people out there, so he knows that he can find somebody once he does get divorced. So I'm just curious what you think about that. I I'm a little. I mean, I think it's totally wrong for for married men to be kind of trolling the sites. Listen, Again, looking for the emotional, you know, the, the, the women who are emotionally available and kind of looking for love. Uh, I, I think that anybody who is misrepresenting their reality in under any circumstances is just that's not the right thing to do. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. And if 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 you're married and you're looking uh, whether you're whether you think you're in a bad marriage, whatever the circumstances are. If you meet somebody, you need to just be up front and tell them, not wait three dates, because I know uh, Flan Handler was asking earlier if it was okay to meet somebody since he's thinking about getting divorced, but he doesn't want, you know, he doesn't want uh, to, he doesn't want to get divorced till he has somebody else, which is, that, that's a whole other issue in and of itself, but mm -hmm. um, he's asking if it's okay to let her know after the third date. Listen, after the first date, after the second, third communication, after the third date, if the person you're seeing has gotten any kind of vibe or what they think is your reality, and then you throw a bucket of cold water on them by telling them something different, it's just wrong. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're married and you're looking for love in other places, what you need to do is just be honest from the beginning. Let the woman make the choice. Mm -hmm. Listen, whether we agree that it's right or wrong, nine times out of ten, if she really, she's really digging you, she's going to go out with you anyways. Right. But at least you were honest and upfront, and you don't create a credibility issue later when she finds out that you lied, and then that becomes the topic for the remainder of the relationship. Mm -hmm. That becomes the topic of choice. Right. Oh, you lied to me when I met you. You lied mm -hmm. to me when I met you. Right. So, right, and I don't want to just slam this one guy because I agree that women do this too. I mean, women yes. are you know, online doing the same thing. Yes. Uh, right. I mean, in that case, uh, Michelle was dating someone and she was online. Yes. I was, with I was, I was, I was, <laughs> thank you for putting me out there. Um, thank you for throwing me <laughs> under the bus. But yes, I, I was dating somebody. I met the online guy because I got a, you know, I, I got a guilty conscience over it because I do feel, I do feel that emotional cheating is cheating. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I hadn't met the guy. I was in a relationship. I ended a couple weeks in. I ended the relationship I was in to further communicate and explore this situation with the online guy. And so, yes, you yeah. know, and, and I'm certainly guilty of, you know, of, of having been unfaithful, so to speak, yeah. in, in this online situation. Yeah, I can see both sides because, I mean, there's always that transition period where you're not completely broken off, but you know that you're not interested, 
but you haven't gotten to the point where, okay, it's cut, you know? Right. And so in the meantime, you're over there playing the other field. You might not be having sex or doing anything that could be misconstrued as something wrong but right. the fact is is that your eyes are wandering somewhere else so right i think that's i mean I, i'm not saying it's right or wrong because everyone can make their own decisions but uh listen if you, i think we're human and we all have those you, periods of time where right where where you slip or you don't do the right thing or what you think and your partner thinks is the right thing because mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's all relative to you know, to our own personal experiences and our own opinions. But if you know that your partner would be very upset if they found out you were, you know, communicating via text or via email and, and you had an emotional connection with somebody that's not them, mm -hmm. it's cheating. Mm -hmm. If it's something that if your partner knew it would change the entire scenario, it's mm -hmm. cheating. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't you agree? Well, yeah, to a certain degree. But in the same thing, I can't help but thinking you know, I recently saw the, I think it was, I think it might have been that movie with Julia Roberts, that new movie. I'm not, I can't remember actually, but uh, it was, the scenario was that the, the husband was always online looking at nudie pictures. Right. And I mean, I don't consider that cheating. For no. a man, that's not really no. cheating. No, not if he's know? just looking at pictures. Yeah. Look, I think in general, you know, when, when, we create in our mind a picture of who we think the people around us are based on what they project. Mm -hmm. So when time goes on and you find out any idiosyncrasy about that person's character or personality that's not consistent with what you thought they right. were, yeah. it's just shocking. Yes. And, and it creates a problem. Right. So when a woman thinks she knows her husband inside out and then finds out, you know, years in that he's looking at porn every day online or every night online or whenever she's sleeping she feels that there's been a disconnect yeah. you know she and or it probably the whoever that is the victim or whatever they probably that brings out insecurities but they might not be true to the reality of the situation i mean you might feel like oh wow he's looking somewhere else i'm not satisfying him right uh, he's looking for another wife etc but the reality is is that he just men are like that you know <laughs> that's a whole other topic <laughs> i know we're gonna have to definitely <laughs> uncover some of those uncover some of those uh, you issues, know, issues sure. at, on a later date let's yeah. take a minute and thank our sponsors once again yes thank you uh to usgoldcoins.com our trusted advisors for investments in rare gold and silver coins uh andy is uh, the owner there and he takes the mystery out of buying silver and gold by holding your hand They take a hands-on approach better to call and speak to them directly for their current inventory And the number you want to call them at is 1-800-HOT-COIN And if for those of you that are not in the US uh, You can email them and uh, they're pretty good about responding um, Mezzygrill.com is our other sponsor where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor and they actually are serving breakfast now so it's not just lunch and dinner but breakfast they're on 8th Avenue at 55th Street in New York City just a couple of blocks from south of Columbus Circle and carpevm.com seize your market say it with video Charlie works closely with you from beginning to end to ensure that your video makes an impact and on the web and in and they're engaging your viewers with the uh, video and your products that you're trying to sell. And our other sponsor is mountgox.com and uh, they are the Bitcoin exchangers. And for those of you that don't know what Bitcoins are, you can go to uh, bitcoinme.com and we created a website to inform people about what Bitcoins are. And they are the newest form of uh, currency in the online world and um, that's mountgox.com and uh, you can get a 3% off now through August 9th and if you trade with them thank you to our sponsors we really appreciate everything that you do for us so Thanks. did you uh, yes. get anything else from the chat room there? yes yes I'm loving I'm loving this chat so many interesting comments and questions Makoto was uh, curious to find out what if you get to know somebody online and Emily I want your opinion on this too what if you get to know somebody online you fall in love with you know the, the person they seem to be 
and then you then they misrepresented themselves, you know, with showing you a, a hot person's picture, mm -hmm. and then they turn out to be unattractive. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I actually have two blogs on this called "Will the Real Slim Shady Still Please Stand Up?" <laughs> <laughs> and literally in a span of a week, I went out with three different people who didn't look anything like their profile. Okay, great. So why did it go? It was it was a fascinating experience, and this is why I really think that you need to take the online meeting offline. Mm -hmm. You need to meet somebody, and you need to see if, you know, there, for, for me, and I'm, you can call me vain, you can call me whatever you want, but I really think that a physical connection and a, you know, an appearance has a lot to do with whether you're going to be attracted to somebody in the long run. Yes. I agree. Yeah, I agree. There's <laughs> nothing <laughs> better than live in person. Not, I know we all believe it. Um, what was that? I missed it. I said whether anybody else says that or not, I know we all believe it. Yes. But don't you, but let me ask you this, because this is, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I differ a little bit only, be, uh, only because, I mean, I definitely agree that you have to have a physical connection, but I believe that when you fall in love with somebody online, that... If you meet them in person, they don't necessarily have to be physically perfect or physically oh, totally ideal agree. or physically ideal, what you think is ideal in every way. Suddenly, at least I think maybe this is true for, for a lot of women because women are more emotional and less physical than men. But I've met guys that are not that physically attractive, but because they're because of their intellect, because of the way they speak, because of the way they dress, the way they carry themselves, uh, and after you've fallen in love with them online, they just become that much more attractive to mm -hmm. you. So there, I don't think that that it's always there's always a disconnect when you meet them in person, and they're let's say they're not as great looking as you thought they were, but if they're a fantastic person. I mean, there's a there's an attraction in there in there at some point somewhere. I mean, has that ever happened to you, Emily? Oh yeah, definitely. No, I 100% I agree with that. Um, but I just think that you know, meeting somebody online, the importance of you know getting to know who that person is when they don't have the time to sit down and actually craft and think about an email, where they actually have to you know be themselves you know, uh, uh, immediately mm -hmm. has a lot to do with kind of who that person is too. Yeah. Right. Cause I mean, in my particular case, when I, if I would have gotten to a point where I could have met this person, uh, and I, and I told you earlier, I was willing to meet him even in spite of the lie of the physical lie. If he was in every other way, the person that he said he was Ed, I mean, it, look, I got so emotionally involved. He could have been blue coming off of the planet Mars and I would have married this guy. <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that's how fantastic I thought he was. Right. See, but I also think that I have never fallen in love with somebody just from, you know, talking to them online. And I think that we need to, you know, as a generation that is really nurturing relationships from meeting online, that you really need to meet somebody offline before you really kind of take that next step. I agree. And let me tell you something. Um, what you said a little while ago is going to become one of my new favorite mottos. You know, take the online dating offline. Yeah. I think that's, that's fantastic. I mean, it, it, I certainly will never fall prey again. I hope not, you know, to, to this sort of thing. And certainly if and when I were to meet somebody online, uh, it's only going to be, there's only going to be a couple of correspondences before uh, before we just have to meet in person. I yeah. mean, I, I'm just wired differently now after having gone through this experience. Yeah. Cassandra is is uh, has an interesting question also. What if you meet somebody online and they have chatted with you live on camera? I mean, is it still considered a scam? I mean, I think just because somebody's willing to show you what they look like, maybe it is the real physical, you know, the real physical person. But that doesn't mean that they're not uh, misleading you in every other detail about their life. Absolutely. You know, yeah. like it doesn't mean that they're really a neurosurgeon. Right. Well, and yeah. again, but that's something that can happen to you if you meet somebody, you know, in the produce department at a grocery store. That's right. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. I to, you know, clarify that's not something that just yeah. happens to people who online. Correct. Do. And yeah. that's why I said earlier that I really think 
um, and, and that's one of the one of the most important points that I can make in in this conversation, just in life in general, that there are so many people out there that are misrepresenting their reality, who they are, who their family is, what their name is. Mm -hmm. That's wrong on every level. That's wrong on every level. And you just have to be very alert to the fact, not be naive, you know, be very alert to the fact that there are a lot of people that live their life this way, going yeah. around telling stories that aren't real, mm -hmm. you know, just to feed their ego and make themselves look good in the eyes of the other person. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think, uh, well, for me, I know this is more about, um, you want to do a show more about women's issues, but like for me, I'm gay and I know, this is a generalization, of course, but I know that in the gay world, uh, you know, like you said before, it's more about the physical as, a, as opposed to the emotional. So in right. the gay world, then it's more about sex. So uh, the key indicators on those websites that you go f for that is like if they show you a body part, but no full. So they're right. always asking for pictures of full body, including right. face, head, the whole body. Right. Uh, is one of the things, because as soon as you see pictures that are not that, then you assume that it's right. not a real person. And the other thing that you have to assume is that most people, even if they're showing their real picture, that's the best picture they've ever <laughs> taken. So, so I'm yes. cynical. So I always think, wow, they look good, but yes. what, what do they look like and in reality? So, and sometimes the excuse to not send you a picture with a headshot is that, well, I'm sending you a, you know, I'm sending you a picture of my genitals. I don't want to send email that also, I don't want to send that picture everything, through email yeah. that has everything, you know, so you can see my face. Yeah, but, but you don't reality, have to see that. <laughs> but the reality is, if they're just sending you pictures of body parts and, and you, you know, they've never sent you that the sexy full, picture with the face, yeah. that get, that's also a sign that, you know, that, that maybe, maybe it's not their thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know from my friends, they tell me that in the gay world, it's definitely like 90% of the time, it's not the same person that's in the picture. So I'm assuming it's probably the same in the, in the hetero world, right. you know, that people are just not who they, they claim to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And we have to, you know, be cautious and, and know that when we're dialing in to right. these websites. So Emily, what are some of the websites that you use to date and uh, do they provide any kind of um, um, instructions or criteria that they follow to eliminate this kind of thing? You know, Match.com recently came out with, um, it was all over the news. Um, they were, I, I don't even know how to, matching, I guess, email addresses with a profile. Like like a profile data, yeah, like a sexual profile database. Uh huh. Um, which, if you're that stupid and you didn't get a new email address after the fact, I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, but that one, you know that they can just create another email address yeah, and move exactly. on. So you know, in all honesty, I think that there's a lot of I use personally, and there's sites that I've I've tried everything, and you know, eHarmony, Match.com, Plenty of Fish, Jazzed. Zeus, I mean, you name it, I have loved to try it. Mm -hmm. um, How About We is kind of fun. It's where you propose dates and, and people say if they want to go on them or not. But none of these sites can really protect you from online scams. If you think about how many people are out there, you know, online dating, it's a huge, huge community. And I think that the most important thing is that you need to be careful of yourself and that you need to, you know, not be stupid. You need to really... When you go on dates, you need to be safe. You need yes. to yes. drive yourself. You need to, you know, consider all, don't get too drunk. There's a lot of things that, you know, tips online that you can look up. Well, and, uh, where would be a good place to look these things up? Uh, you know what? Off the top of my head, I if you just Google online dating tips, there's some great ones. Um, there's a, a, a blogger that I love, eFlirt Expert. Um, she's fantastic and has some great tips on what to do and what not to do in dating. Emily, what um, you have a fantastic blog as well. Uh, tell the audience where they can find you. Thanks. Yeah, you guys can find me at um, www.mylifeonmatchandmore. Um, and there I just really blog about my dating experiences and I love to get kind of feedback of what everybody else is going through. Um, I'm just like you guys and... My dating life it has its ups and downs as well. 
Um, and then I also, you can find me on Twitter, which I actually live tweet during my dates, which everybody thinks is hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Can you repeat your blog again? Yeah, my blog is www.mylifeonmatchandmore. And my Twitter handle is just mylifeonmatch. And so you do like uh, step by step as you're dating what's going on on your Twitter? Oh, yeah. I'm like, he's in the bathroom. He does not look like Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Emily. Or, you know, I, I try to be try to be sly, but sometimes it's a little harder than, than others. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds very interesting. I'd like to check that out yeah. for sure. I'm curious <laughs> now. Uh, but I think we've run out of time, right? Yes. A Emily, thank you so much for joining us. Um, oh, I want you to come back. Class. I want you to come back and join us again on similar topics. Uh, I, I'm going to be online chatting with some of the people in the in the chat room after the show. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. It's yes, been a blast, and the hour just flew by. Yes. Yeah, Thanks. no problem. I'll be on the to the chat the, in the chat room for a while as well. Okay, okay great. great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you next Bye. week. Bye. <laughs>